Creepins, my name's Mel and I'm a fifth year physics major and math minor at the University of Guelph. Today we're going to talk about what a physics degree looks like and what kind of courses you'd be taking in physics. Let's get started. So in your first year of general physics, you're going to have two semesters of 2.5 credits in each semester. So your first semester is going to consist of Chem 1040, which is a general chemistry course, CIS 1300, which is a introductory programming course. You'll get to choose between one of three biologies listed below, and you're going to have to take a IPS 1500 course. Now that is an integrated physics and calculus course that is specific to the University of Guelph and is geared towards teaching physics students specifically everything that you need to know uh, in foundational physics. In semester two, you're going to have Math 1160, which is linear algebra. You're gonna have part two of that general chemistry, which is Chem 1050. Then you're gonna choose another one of those three biologies listed below. And finally, IPS 1510, which is the part two of the integrated physics and calculus course. So now we're on to year two of your undergrad in general physics. So you're gonna be taking in semester one, another 2.5 credits. Course one, you're gonna be taking math 2200, which is advanced calculus one. Then you're gonna be taking math 2270, which is applied differential equations. Then you'll take physics 2240, which is thermal physics. And you're gonna take physics 2330, which is your first course in electricity and magnetism, which you're gonna be learning a lot of in your degree in physics. So your last 0.5 credit is for a liberal education elective where you can choose from a list of approved electives that I'll link down below. For example, I took Sociology 1100, but you can choose anything that interests you on that list there. And that is semester three of your undergrad. And so now we're on semester four, where you can take Physics 2180, which is Experimental Techniques in Physics. So this is going to be your first lab course in physics. Then you'll have Physics 2310, which is Mechanics and Physics 2340, which is part two of Electricity and Magnetism that you took in semester three. Now, that one credit that you have left in this semester can be used for any approved science electives or any approved electives for the Bachelor of Science students. Keep in mind, you'll need to take 1.5 credits by the end of your degree in approved science electives. You can also use this one credit to put it towards a minor. I personally minored in math, so this is where I started slotting in my math courses. And so now we're in year three of our undergraduate degree in general physics, and this is semester five. So in semester five, you're going to take IPS 3000, which is a science communications course, and then you'll take physics 3130, which is mathematical physics. Then Phys 3230, which is Quantum Mechanics 1. This is your first introduction to quantum mechanics and it's a lot of fun. Physics 3400, which is Advanced Mechanics. And finally, you get 0.5 credits left to take any electives that you'd like. And again, if you're trying to get a minor, this is where you'd slot in another minor credit. Now we're on to semester six of your undergrad, where you're gonna have another 2.5 credits. One being in Nano 3600, which is Computational Methods in Material Science. This is kind of like another programming course, but you're gonna be doing a lot more physics application here. Then you have Physics 3000, which is Optics, Fundamentals and Applications. This is the only optics course that you'll be taking in your undergrad. Then you're gonna have Physics 3510, which is Intermediate Laboratory. So it's kind of like the part two for experimental techniques in physics. And so this is another lab course. Then Physics 4040, which is part two to quantum mechanics. And lastly, you can either take Math 3260, which is complex analysis, or an elective of your choice. I personally took complex analysis and loved it. And now we're finally on fourth year, semester seven. So in this semester, you're gonna take another 2.5 credits, 0 0.5 credits being in Physics 4500, which is your final lab course, it's Advanced Physics Laboratory. Then you're gonna take Physics 4180, which is Advanced Electromagnetic Theory. 
then you're gonna have physics 4240, which is statistical physics. Or if you don't wanna take that, you can choose an elective of your choice. Then you can take physics 4001, which is research in physics. So this is where you choose a supervisor, find a project that you're interested in and do four months in the fall, four months in the winter with that supervisor being 0.5 credits in the fall, 0.5 credits in the winter, accounting for one full credit over that year. I personally chose to do the research project where I learned a bunch of transferable skills and I definitely recommend you doing that. If you don't wanna do a research project, you can use that credit uh, for an elective, working towards your minor, anything that you're interested in. And finally, that last 0.5 credit is gonna be used towards any elective that you'd like. And now we're on the last semester of your undergrad where you can take the rest of Physics 4001, which would be Physics 4002, your research project, or an elective of your choice. Now, the rest of the semester is really up to you. You can take anything that you're interested in, but keep in mind that in semester seven or eight, you'll have to take two out of the three following courses, atomic and molecular physics, subatomic physics, and solid state physics. You can take all three, but you definitely need to take two out of those. I personally took atomic and molecular physics and subatomic physics. So now let's do a quick summary. You should have a total of 20 credits, five being first year science credits, 8.5 being required science courses, one credit in restricted electives, 1.5 credits in approved science electives, one credit in liberal education electives, three credits in free electives, and of the total credits required, you should complete 16 credits in science, of which two credits must be at the 4,000 level, and an additional four credits must be at the 3,000 or 4,000 level. Now the template that we gave you today is just a template. You can rearrange it however you'd like. Change up the semesters, take things in different years, that's totally fine. Just make sure you're looking at the prerequisites and restrictions for those courses so that you can take everything smoothly and finish in the time period that you'd like. You can always contact your program counselor to make sure you're completing all the credits necessary to get your physics degree. So regardless of the stream that you're in in physics, whether that be theoretical physics, general physics, chemical physics, biomedical physics, your first year is going to be the same. In second, third, and fourth year is when you start taking courses that are more specified to your specific major. So regardless of the stream that you're in, you're probably going to end up taking a bunch of the courses that I listed above, but this is specifically general physics. Hope this helped and hope you are just as excited about physics as I am.